The NCAA is based off of the rule of amateurism, which states that student athletes are students first. This means that the athletes don't get a salary for participating in athletics, they can't play with professionals, they can't get benefits from agents or prospective agents. What this does not state is that being a student athlete in the NCAA, you do not get to live and do the things that a student regularly, regularly would. Division I student athletes should be compensated for all of the revenue they generate. For my indignant speech, first I talked about how being a student athlete is a full-time job. The NCAA is rigged so that the NCAA is the only real winner in college athletics. They take these student athletes and put them on television and sell items to make themselves money, but these students are barely allowed to make their own. <clears throat> a student at the University of Central Florida loves to create YouTube videos, and people love to see the videos he makes. He's had a lot of people subscribe to his videos. Everyone loves them, except the NCAA. The student, Donald De La Haye, is a kicker for the football team, and the NCAA is trying to take away his eligibility because he has a chance to make money from these videos. Now what is so wrong with this student living like a normal student would get to? It does say in the rules that the student athletes are students first, but if they aren't going to allow these student athletes to live like students, then they better find a way to compensate them. <clears throat> the questions that people bring up when the talk of compensation comes into play is, how are we going to pay all of the athletes? And what about the sports that generate more revenue? It's easy. You give every Division I student athlete a piece of the dough. They deserve it. <clears throat> Put a little extra money in their scholarships and give them enough money to live off of. As Dennis Johnson stated in an article on paying college athletes in 2013, assuming that the education itself, along with the opportunities and athletic department support, is payment enough, is assuming that those expectations are realistic and not just ideal. When people say that scholarships are paid enough, I do not believe that they consider everything. These student athletes do for this, themselves and their school. They have to try and balance school, their sport, and workouts. When do they get to have a regular student life? Like I said earlier, in the rules of amateurism, it says that students must act as students first. Richard Burton stated in an article about college ath athletes are paid with their education in 2013 that this logic is extremely flawed for many of the reasons discussed earlier. The athletes cannot get the same value out of the education because of the already intense time commitment to the sport that has given them the opportunity to be in school. The idea that a college education is payment would have to assume that a college degree always pays off in the long run. If you think about it, the NCAA is kind of like the cartel. They sit back and let these students do all the heavy lifting and bring money to them, and in return these student athletes get pretty close to nothing. Yes, some may get uh, their schooling paid for, but for the amount of money these sports bring in, they should have some kind of payment. Like I said, if they add in some money to their scholarships for a payment, it would still count for the same thing. My second indictment, I talked about how these student athletes can't make their own money. It doesn't help that on top of all the school and workouts and practices, they have to find a way to make money without violating some sort of NCAA rule. Which means in order to make money, they gotta try and get a part-time job. Which is almost impossible with their schedules, but they need to make money, so they gotta try. These student athletes cannot do anything to make money besides getting a job because anything else would most likely violate an NCAA rule. Student athletes are working a full-time job already as they put in about 40 hours a week, if not more, with school and their sport. So why should they have to get a part-time job, part job just to have a little money on hand? The NCAA needs to fix the amateurism rule because if they aren't going to allow these student athletes to live like any other student, one day the National Collegiate Athletics Association will no longer exist. This would be a bigger problem for them than having to give the students the money that they deserve. So maybe they need to sit down and think about the business they run. They are running. If they wait too long, these college athletes are going to realize that they are being used by the NCAA and just leave. Mark Edelman stated in Article 21 Reasons Why Student Athletes Are Employees that Division I football and men's basketball players do not merely play a sport of leisure. Rather, they are core members of the university's marketing team as well as the labor force behind a lucrative secondary industry in hosting organized sporting events. Now, this could be a total cash-in for the NCAA also. When the compensation starts going out to the athletes, they can start marketing these players more than they already do, which would help make even more money. They can bring the NCAA video games back that people love to play. 
They can sell jerseys and t-shirts with players' names on them and any other memorabilia that they want. This is a win-win situation for the NCAA. They really do need to have a meeting and discuss the opportunities of this and what could happen if they don't. So, in conclusion, Division I student-athletes should be compensated for the amount of revenue they generate. They put in the hours of an average American work week. They are the people that fill the stands and stadiums full of people and get close to nothing in return. The NCAA is rigged and needs to have some work done before they do not exist anymore. Thank you.